Hello and welcome or welcome back to Read Becca. Today I want to share a book with you and that is Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. This is such a delightful little book. I can't believe how under the radar it is flying even though it's a bestseller so clearly some people are picking it up and I think it was a book of the month club book. So I've seen a few people haul it and that put me on or that put it on my radar because this cover is obviously gorgeous and I've not seen anybody actually talking about it as a book. I just love this. This charmed me from the first few pages. It's such a whimsical and delightful and atmospheric book. So right at the beginning we are following this character Zoe and we do have multiple perspectives but we start with Zoe and she's kind of the central character to this. But Zoe is 18 years old. She's traveling to this Mallow Island in South Carolina and she's going to move into her mother's condo. Her mother has died years ago and this is sort of the last thing that her dad kept of her mother's for her when she needed it as an adult and now she's an adult she's moving out on her own and preparing to go to university and she's moving to the Della Wisps condo and they're named for the Della Wisp birds and these birds are very unusual and they have great personality to them uh, they're a little aggressive to anyone who comes to the condos because they live there in this sort of courtyard around this small condo complex I think there's six people there total so it's a very small community is what makes this up and that's what is so charming about this is that you can see almost right away that there's a sense of found family and community building to this story and so he has gotten there I felt in the first chapter that this seemed like a cozy mystery like the vibes are there and then in the second chapter someone dies and it's not a murder so this is a cozy mystery without murder um the person who dies is Elizabeth one of the neighbors who was really curmudgeonly and difficult to be around for everyone in this neighborhood she would yell at people for making any sound for being outside their condos so it really closed off this community and, and no one was connected with each other and so there's this big transition that's going on with Zoe coming and Lisbeth no longer being there and Zoe has this boisterous personality she's very exuberant and lively and she really pulls together these people who have barely interacted uh, basically other than just living near each other and as a result of Lisbeth's death everyone kind of you know finds out or, or they knew before but it's clear she was a hoarder and Zoe is hired by the the man who manages the complex to clean out this hoarder's house because the Delois condos were really renovated by this reclusive mysterious author Roscoe Avenger who kind of made this island Mallow Island famous with his one hit wonder novel Sweet Mallow and so Roscoe Avenger is this this presence but he's he's reclusive so so he's never around actually in the book like everyone knows who he is he has connections all over the island and he keeps coming up but you know nobody really has has seen him or talked to him in years but it's clear Elizabeth um, worked for him as his assistant and she always had this story that she wanted him to tell and she thought he could he could follow up so Zoe is going through boxes and boxes of papers looking for anything that might put together what this story is to give to Roscoe Avenger. So that's that's the initial conceit and then we meet two other characters in their perspectives. Charlotte who's another neighbor and she's kind of going through a difficult time. She's going through a breakup and the loss of a job so there are some heavy things in here especially with her background as well but they're handled with such heart and hope even the difficult things it's, it's clear there's like a light at the end of the tunnel for these people or that they're they're in search of their hopeful future so she she hasn't really um made connections long-term connections with anyone where she is and suddenly you know Zoe is this friend for her that she hasn't had in her life before and we do see a lot of flashbacks to her past that were, were very very difficult and so that's a lot to do with why she has sort of cut herself off. 
she's a henna artist and so obviously there's not much market for that so she's desperately looking for a job and then the two of them Zoe and Charlotte as they sort of bond and become friends um they're both young women I think um Zoe Zoe's 18 and Charlotte is in her mid-20s and then Mac is the third person they meet who is a chef so we have a big food cozy element here because he is a, an award-winning chef he makes this wonderful food centered around comfort and home sort of cuisine um and very very southern cooking style obviously we're, we're in south carolina here in this little island town so that's the sort of cooking that you get here so it's a very cozy comforting warm food vibes throughout here and Mac winds up getting getting sort of caught up with these people. He clearly has a heart for empathy and we do see that play out in a more whimsical way here because each of these characters has both literal and figurative ghosts in this community. Um, th this community is full of ghosts. So we do get literal ghost stories, which are not spooky, scary ghost stories. They're really reflections on the ghost's past and telling us why they're still hanging around, why they're there for the person that they're there for. And those were really beautiful. We also have another whimsical element in that uh, Zoe has an invisible bird named, named Pigeon. And strangely, I, I feel like we have the Delawisp birds all around and we have Pigeon around. You would think they would kind of interact, but they really, really don't. Um, so, so the birds are this this prominent element throughout this this story, and I want to read something that um, the characters say to each other. This is Zoe talking to Fraser, the building manager. I think they're beautiful and unusual. Me too, he smiled. There are birds, and then there are other birds. Maybe they don't sing. Maybe they don't fly. Maybe they don't fit in. I don't know about you, but I'd just much rather be an other bird than just the same old thing. So there's that, that beautiful like self-acceptance and sense of misfits. So the community building aspect to this and the found family aspects to this are what won me over a hundred percent. But the writing is really lush and really reaches into your heart. Um, the, the whimsical elements really give it that, that vibe of magic, even though, you know, there isn't any actual magic to this. It's the presence of these lost loved ones in this story and the way that we carry them on with us. So I loved every aspect of that. Then we have this whole Roscoe Avenger element where we're, we're getting this really bookish mystery to the story where he keeps popping up everywhere that the characters go. He's so connected to this island and he's made it really famous. It's a tourist destination because of this, but he he's nowhere to be seen. And obviously we're, we're digging through this hoarder's belongings, trying to find the story for him. What's his connection to everyone in this community? Um, he renovated the Delois from a stables originally. So that's why it's this, you know, small close knit sort of place, but we've had so long this emotional distance between these people. So we see that layout was actually very, right for a close-knit community and, and everybody bonding over all of this is just so phenomenal. So over the, the course of this we also have one other element of everyone's broken and damaged relationships and I think that's a lot of the other birds element. These people are all sort of misfits for a reason and we do see another character from off the island in perspective as well who has a connection back to this community and we are seeing this all culminating and the connection between these people is really in, not, not literally, they don't have any backstory connection, but it's in their difficult relationships in their past, in how they, they came up in their lives and what has brought them to this place. And so that's what connects them all. That's what draws them to be these, as these other birds, these misfits coming together. So we see that play out through re resolving these mysteries of this community and how this, this island is connected to the community, how the, the found family all draw together in support of each other without any real major dramatic happenings. There's, there's like minor moments of drama, but very little <laughs> to this. It's mostly about the gentle comfort and sort of hope of, of coming together as a community. So the community building and found family vibes of this 
just won me over so much. The writing and atmosphere added to that, and then the whimsical speculative elements on top of it, plus the food writing, uh, really sold me on this book being a, a five-star read for me. It was just wonderful. There's not a lot of plot to it. You have to be very invested in the characters. But I think if you give this book a shot and read the first couple pages, you're probably going to be drawn in or know immediately it's not for you because it doesn't really change much past that point. So I just want to go live on Mallow Island, even though I don't think it's a real place. Um, it was just such a delight and it felt like a fully formed place to be. So that is it for Other Birds by Sarah Addison Ellen. I hope you will check this book out. Thanks so much for watching.